story short and not, you know, get into scientific details, which is just going to bore people. Let's try to keep it simple. Okay. Obviously, our body needs insulin. I mean, I'm not, nobody says that, you know, you need to be on a ketogenic diet or, or not, you know, work on, on improving your insulin uh, output and insulin sensitivity. But like everything, there is a limit to everything. Um, I was saying there is a big difference between, what I was going to say, weight gain and protein synthesis. Obviously, if you do over physiological amounts of insulin, it's going to, you know, cause a lot of fluid retention, nutrient retention, um, which people associate with muscle growth, but it's really not. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can yes, hear. Yeah, yep, perfect. Yep, yeah. perfect. And you know, I don't want to make it too complicated, but if people should concentrate on improving insulin sensitivity, that means the less insulin you need to have new protein uh, synthesis, to have new growth, the better it is for your body. And people here are just throwing in enormous amounts of insulin and simple sugars and and confusing this, this weight gain with muscle growth. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you gain weight because you, you practically, all that happens is you inflate because you're forcing your receptors on, on, the, on the muscle surface to you know, take nutrients in, but the most of it is, is liquid. The most of it is not new muscle growth. It's not new synthesis. And once you go over a perfect balance where you, your protein synthesis is stimulated to a maximum, the rest is not growth. You're just going to cause a lot of desensibilization and long-term problems with, that go with it. The, the reason... And the second point... Sorry, Patrick. The reason I think a lot of coat... A lot of... Uh... I don't, want to use, I don't want to use the word coaches recommend the use of insulin is because then they can say oh my athletes put on 20 pounds since mm. following my training program and it's like they're not actually making a better physique they're just making a heavier physique so they can then brag about it you know this is this is the I see, this is the pattern I see the the fact that we are here talking about this proves how much it has been blown out of proportion you know yeah I mean Obviously, you have you know a 250, 280 pound bodybuilder, which goes to a very intense training. It is necessary that post training, you stimulate insulin release in order for you know receptors to get active and those nutrients, amino acids, glucose, and everything goes into the muscle. But you can achieve that with you know if you have a good insulin sensitivity and you work on that, you can achieve just the same amount of growth and stimulation with your own production. How? Now, well, first of all, and which we should talk about, talk about insulin, but talk about insulin sensitivity. Mm -hmm. You know, how many athletes measure their, their blood glucose in the morning? How many do blood tests to, to measure their basal insulin levels mm -hmm. just to see where they are? How sensitive are they to, to carbs, to insulin? Sorry, when I mean, you, sorry, sorry, sorry I've, I've got to say, when you say uh, basal insulin levels, do you mean the HbA1c, which is the average blood sugar reading of the, the previous three months to, to show how, bod, how well your body is uh, create, um, producing insulin? Well, that's, that's another test you can do. Right, okay. But sorry. before you get into that, you know, because I worked with also uh, diabetic uh, athletes like, like Ronnie Rockle at the time, yeah, yeah. and that's obviously a test you have to do to, to really see how efficient carbs are are taken up but it's 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 sufficient that in the morning you take your blood glucose on empty stomach mm -hmm. and you do that you know over several days sometimes even weeks and you have a blood test to measure your basal insulin level that right. means how much insulin is your body producing just to keep your body stable without nutrients mm -hmm. and then from there you see immediately where you stand now i have not seen any athlete using especially um, uh, slow-acting insulin over weeks and months, doing a test and having normal results. Afterwards, your body is just out of whack and you will not be able to achieve the same results if you don't keep increasing those insulin amounts and you ha will have to do it, you know, the rest of your bodybuilding career, probably life, in order to achieve the same amount of growth. So what you're saying bodybuilders are using long-acting insulin. What's the benefits to that? 
Because I, I mean, I use it because I'm diabetic. But I mean, why? What's the? I don't understand the reason behind using long-acting insulin over fast. You're asking the wrong person. I mean, there there is absolutely no need for it. Yeah. And Stupid. you know, I hear oh, bodybuilders eat a lot of carbs. Okay, and in order to have their own beta cells not working so hard, so your pancreas is not working so hard, we're giving extra insulin to help him. You know, right, so the body is yeah. not overproducing insulin. But, I mean, come on, this doesn't make any sense. First of all, you don't need all those carbs all the time. Mm -hmm. If you're very sensitive to carbs, I mean, the biggest bodybuilder out there probably is, is okay with six to seven to 800 grams of carbs a day. Let's be realistic. Yeah. And if you do your cardio, if you train hard, a pancreas, you know, if, if it's working fine, will be able to do all the work work necessary you don't need mm. extra insulin uh, in there mm. which is just going to disrupt your insulin sensitivity and that's just the biggest problem it's not during it's after what? especially when you go from off season to diet yeah what happens you will not be able to keep using all that insulin Can in order to lose body fat at one point in time you're going to have to reduce carbs yeah. so um you're going to come off that insulin yeah. And all that water, all those nutrients that have been, you know, taken up so nicely with that extra insulin is not going to be there. But you're going to find uh, insulin receptors which are not working like they were before. I mean, nobody can yeah. tell me any different. I've seen it so many times. And you will have to lower the carbs much, much lower than what you normally should if your insulin sensitivity is fine. So, so sorry, go on. you may have 10 to 15 pounds more in the off season. Mm -hmm. But you're going to have to restrict the calories so much more in the diet because your body is just not so able yeah. to, to work on lower, uh, on, on medium amount of carbs that all the benefits that you may have in the off season, you're going to lose them in pre-contest. When ah, you step on stage, you're water free, you're, you're, you're yeah, just, yeah. you're lean. I, and I, none of that will be there. Yeah, I saw a, uh, it was, I've said this in the previous episodes, I saw it, uh, it was a guy at my gym, he was a middleweight, and he went up to 100 kilos in the off-season, and he was, uh, he, was being, he was being prepped by a pro in America that was recommending him to eat a lot of rice and a lot of, taking a lot of insulin, and uh, he was like, oh, the pumps are fantastic, and then when he dieted down, he didn't actually look any different, he just ended up with a stomach. That's, all, that's the only thing that was left, was just a big stomach from the insulin. So what about, what about, say, bodybuilders watching this thinking, well, I'm only going to use it just for this one show. Are there any long-term damage, damaging effects to a person's body, even if they're just telling themselves, well, I'm only using it in the short term? Um, it, it depends from person to person, obviously. Uh, you know, all the genetics are different. Uh, the shorter you do it, probably you're not going to have long-term problems. Yeah. But we're talking about benefits. I mean, to build new muscle tissue... You cannot do that over two, three, four weeks. How much muscle can you build in that amount of time? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about muscle, not weight. Yes. You know, it, it goes through heavy training. It goes through intense training. That's the most important factor is to create that stress and, uh, in order to have an adaptive response post-training, you know, to grow muscle larger. Now, I see people training these, these, these giant sets, light training, you know, insulin stuff. It all looks good. I mean, but it's not growth. It, yeah. it, you just cannot grow a muscle like that. Yeah. So if you talk about short term. Okay, you may gain 5, 10, 15 pounds short term, but it's just not muscle. And that's the problem. It's just, it's just cosmetic. You think. Mm -hmm. you, you, you're, you should measure your muscle growth in, in terms of performance. I always ask my guys, what are you doing at the gym? How did you improve? Can you train longer? Can you train harder? Can you train heavier? If that's the case, even if the body weight is not going up, hey, we have m your muscle. Yeah. But just, just to, to look at the, uh, the weight, it just, it just doesn't get, you know, bring anything.